It's Madden NFL 24, where division rivals will clash in the AFC South. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Houston Texans, and it's coming up next. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it will be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gunn joined, as always, by Charles Davis. As CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Well, meanwhile, for the Jaguars, the rebuild under Doug Peterson is right on track. And listen, nobody's going to get wildly excited about 9-8, and eight, which they were last year. I get that. But when that comes on the heels of 3-14 and 14 and 1-15, and 15, certainly a step in the right direction. And the biggest stride they can make this year is on defense, 28th against the pass last year. And just moving into the middle of the pack, that could buy them a couple more wins and put them in a great spot come playoff time. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time. And they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Year. Here's Travis Etienne. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Here's Lawrence to throw. He'll get this one complete to Zane Jones. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards there for Jacksonville at a first down as well. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On first and 10, it's ETN. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. That's a very nice game there, a confidence-building run. Love the execution up front, and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. On first down, right back to ETN. They juked him, and he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. A couple of nice carries back to back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these are bare bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. He completes it to Ridley. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Pretty solid opening drive here, Charles. They've worked in the run game, the pass game, just steadily getting yards, and now they've got it inside the red zone here with an opportunity. And the only thing they don't have so far is points. But the way that they're moving the ball now, that shouldn't take much. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones, 
A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Could not have scripted it any better. And many offenses do script their opening possession on offense. They followed that one perfectly. Took the ball right downfield and scored, giving energy not just to the offensive unit, but to their team overall. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. That time, a six-play drive, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, CJ Stroud. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there in every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. On first down, here's Stroud. Now a quick throw there, but it's gonna be incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Here's Stroud. Man open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards on that one and also a Texan first down. One well, of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One well, of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. That's caught again by Schultz. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Second and a couple. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. He couldn't get the edge there, wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. With their footwork and speed, it was negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short, Definitely was a great time to dial one up. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They go right back to Singletary. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Oh well, man, coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Now hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. And 
And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Now Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. That one goes for eight yards. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has. If he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Stroud off the play fake. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. On second down, it's Stroud. He's got his man. It's the tight end, Brevin Jordan. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. we got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game that will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. Chad Muma brings him down on that one defensively. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Right back to Singletary on second down. Down right around the 25. They follow up the first down one-yard run with a minimal gain of two. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just run them and hit. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect they converted twice on third down that drive already but couldn't make it a third we always talk about in-game adjustments how about what the defense did there able to shut them down on that attempt so on fourth down texan kicker kaimi fairbairn comes on right hash mark a 42 yard attempt the kick by fairbairn is good and they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on that, I was. Partner. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive, you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Fairbairn now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw here into the hands of Jones. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. Here's Lawrence. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. 
But when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. So what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And dropped at the 35, but able to display some strength on the run. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets them to second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. Stroud to throw it. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five of the six. A big play that time on the catch and run. And it'll result in a fresh set of downs. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Stroud. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Nico Collins from six yards away. And the Texans have taken the lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big-time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks used to be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Been a little bit of an interesting start. The first drive for him, Charles, they had the passing touchdown. The second drive, he threw the interception. So we'll see what this third drive of the ball game brings. Yeah, it's kind of a tiebreaker, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's the tough part for them and for him because, yeah, things went really well in that first one, not so well on the second one. He wants to get back to what he did to get this game going. The slot man in motion right. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead a handoff up the middle. Now there's Will Anderson, the third overall pick to bring him down. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second down, Lawrence. And a quick throw here, and that's complete. A gain of eight there on the play, and that will bring up third and one. They'll run with ETN. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down.
On first down, Lawrence. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the football. That's a big time play right there. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Second and 10. Back to the ground with ETN. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. He's off to a great start here in this first quarter. It seems like this defense is probably going to have trouble containing him. I would agree with that. I love the observation. And here's the thing. Their game plan coming to fruition. You knew that they came in thinking that they could run it. And now they're proving that they can and doing it in a big way. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Denzel Perryman there to bring him down. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Ten seven, our score after one right here on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter. Second down and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. Now Lawrence to throw. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Now Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Zay Jones with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Jaguars have regained the lead in the second quarter and already his second touchdown reception. Absolutely the definition of a difference maker here in this first half. Clearly one of his quarterback's favorite targets in this game. And I figure he's going to draw a little more attention and coverage moving forward. Now McManus for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. That time, a nine-play drive. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. to the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. Fights off the tackle at the 20. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score, but Remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. And this will be a Texans first down as the tackle made at the 35-yard line. 
I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. All around great play by Devin Lloyd using his athleticism to get to the backfield and his strength to stop him for a loss. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Now we're behind his man, incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Back deep for Jacksonville, the dangerous Jamal Agnew. That's taken on the 25. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville offense gets the ball back. Travis Etienne and company head back out there. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10, right at the 30. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Boy, that one was well read defensively. And this is all about diagnosis as a safety and being decisive because he saw it setting up in front of him, able to knife through there and make the play. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Here's Lawrence to throw. Touchdowns on their first two drives, but looking like that won't be the case here. Yeah, it looks like someone put their dukes up a little bit, doesn't it? Maybe decided to finally make a stand because those first two drives, they got run over. Now, finally, got their feet under them, got a little bit of balance. They're getting off the field. A Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. Here's King. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And the Texans will take over. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Open man is Noah Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Stroud now on first and 10. And it's knocked away and incomplete. 
when you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And we've got an injured player, and that's running back Devin Singletary, who's in some discomfort. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. need to get this to the 38 that's where the first down marker is here on third Stroud looking to throw oh he had a man running free but he overshot him and it's incomplete my my maybe that ball's two yards shorter it's going to give them the lead because he had a receiver running free there that's a tough one to miss on on fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now out come the Jags. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 20. Slot man moves right. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Desmond King making the tackle. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Lawrence will throw. And that'll be off the mark. Too far out in front, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open. And it would have been an easy throw. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and 10. Now Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. And now out comes Houston. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. Play action. Stroud now. And his throw's going to be incomplete. When we start looking for big time corners, we're going to start with athleticism. But without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Pierce gets this one running right. Shoves him aside. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards on that one, and also a Texan first down. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit, because in football nowadays, 
Tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. And Stroud now to throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Josh Allen, the outside linebacker, coming up to drop him for a loss of a full 10 yards. But well, you just knew that these rushers were eager to do that today. Put him on the ground. Their plan? Introduce themselves individually to this rookie quarterback. They set a load a big way there with a loss of double-digit yards on that sack. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguessed themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start on the ground, ETN. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Second down and a little more than a yard here. On the counter, ETN. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Another toad for ETN. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. Here's second and three. Straight ahead, ETN. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. Here now, third and a yard. Toss left side for ETN. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped him, bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Houston set to take over. 
And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. It's a six-yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here comes third and about a foot. Throwing now is Stroud. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try to find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Stroud. And his throw here's incomplete. Noah Brown, the Ohio State man, the intended receiver. But it's going to be second down. to throw. Here's Stroud. This ball tipped and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Again, it's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Stroud. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. That was a long pass attempt downfield, and the ball was popped up in the air. And how come things go from really fast to almost slow motion when the ball's up in the air and the defender's unable to haul it in before it hits the ground? It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need 10 yards out of it on third. He's going to let this go for the end zone. It's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Offense tried to get a little slick there and sneak the back out of the backfield and turn him into the primary deep receiver. But it's good coverage defensively. They were able to break it up. Set to punt. Here's Cameron Johnston. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. 
And not an abundance of time remains on the clock, Charles, but you would think more than enough to try to extend this lead before intermission. And when you're talking about extending the lead, I think you're talking about aiming for the end zone because there is plenty of time for that. The fallback is to get three. But in your mind, you put six on the board right before the half. That's a heck of a dagger and great momentum to carry into the locker room. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. That ball was tipped in the air, and while it ultimately fell incomplete, it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it, who's had quite a day. He knows how to get it into the end zone. He's throwing it really, really well. And maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. On second down, a run with ETN. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here now a third down and eight. Here's Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Oh, he's got him in line. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Looking to throw Lawrence, and he will find Ridley on the left side. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. A 33-yarder from the left hash. The kick by McManus is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. Well, what do you think? Maybe a little disappointment there. They had a pretty nice drive going at the end of the half, and they have to settle for three. Oh, definitely a little bit of disappointment there because when you kick a short field goal, you shake your head a little bit like, could we have done a little bit more? Could we have gotten one more shot to try and get six? But with what little time was left on the clock, I think it was a smart play. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was gonna be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side to play mistake-free football 
the rest of the way. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. One touchdown is the difference. 17-10 our score, and we are back underway on EA Sports. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. And Charles, some things to like about that first half, ultimately trailing here, but certainly this deficit is manageable. So curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission. As am I, because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of their best reps in the first half came through the passing game. They were hitting the open receivers, taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves. Now they just want to pick up the pace of scoring a little bit. So I expect them to come out, continue to throw the ball effectively. Tackle made by Foley Fadukasi, the former UConn Husky. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Right back to Singletary on second down. They find some open field here. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. Even from up here in the booth, the play-by-play -play guy could tell that there was some pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. Well, you have good eyes, and it's almost like a ballet when it's executed that well. Everyone in the right spot, everyone in sync, everyone hitting the perfect notes. A little more percussion and a lot more yeah. bass, I would think, than you get your normal ballet. But at the same time, that was well executed. Play action. Here's Stroud. That's for the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. Incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Stroud. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 19. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route, looks like they're going to the flat, and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside. Not easily covered. And then when they catch it, good momentum built up by them as well. And able to pick up the first. Seven. The 71 yards rushing now for Singletary, and he's got a first down. The running game's played a huge part in getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung him. They'll run here with Pierce. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. A pickup of four on first down. It'll be second and goal. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Again, it's Pierce. But he will lose yardage here. Back to the four-yard line. 
Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. A lot of scrimmage at the four. Here's third and goal. Stroud to throw it. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Jags grab it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. I know one thing, the team that had the ball and was driving, they're going to feel horrible. But the team that was on defense, I think we got to get a little bit of credit, able to hang in there and force a key turnover. Hey, in the red zone, though, had a chance to tie it and an opportunity missed. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. And their defense just helped them out by getting the football back on the opening drive here in the second half. And now can the offense follow through with points on their first possession? And that's a big one for them because after the work the defense has done, they've got a chance here to open up this lead. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tank Bigsby. And he is going to lose yardage here. The derailing that play from the start was Christian Harris. He got back there and stuck him for a loss behind a lot of scrimmage. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you can dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. The throw over the middle, taken in. Through the middle of the field. Touchdown, Jaguars! Evan Ingram, 82 yards. And the Jags are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Partner, they had a good lead as they went in at the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes. And while this game is far from over, I love their approach. McManus now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Last time out, remember, they fumbled the football. That led to the touchdown. And, Charles, they were in the red zone, so that's a backbreaker. they got to try to pick up the pieces here on this drive. Yeah, and I actually started to do the math here, so be patient with me. 12-point swing is the way I calculate it because not only did they drop the ball in the red zone, they watched the opponent score a touchdown right after that. So their goal, have a drive here and try and get some of those points back. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. This is second and eight. Operating from the gun. Stroud, throw right side, taken in by Collins. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Stroud sets up the play action. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. Up 
Stroud looking to throw. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Stroud working out of the gun. Oh, and that is incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Agnew now to return. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Now ETN to start the drive. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. On second down, Lawrence over the middle. He's got his tight end, Ingram. That'll put him close to 100 yards receiving. He's at 98, and he's got a first down. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On oh, first and 10, it's ETN. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who can do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. On second down, ETN once more. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Here's Lawrence to throw. He completes it to Jones. And he is going to have a Jags first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. ETN up the middle. Breaks through the contact. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 127 yards rushing for him now as he's done it on 19 carries. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. On first down, Lawrence. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it's second down. Man in motion is Agnew. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. 
They're in pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. In the red zone, precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, going to be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, just a 32-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. And right now, Charles, you know, this is about building that lead little by little, and they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet, but that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Singletary to get the drive started, and not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Stroud's throw complete into the hands of Schultz here. It'll go down as a gain of six. And now it's third and four. Makes it third and four. And Stroud now to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Here's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. A gain of four. It's now second and six at the 44-yard line. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here goes Stroud again. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And some room to work. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but 
Certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Even with such a big lead late, the effort hasn't lapsed one bit. If the offense wants to score some points in this one, they're going to have to earn it. These guys are not giving up anything. The second down throw now from Stroud. And his throw is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. The throwing again is Stroud. It's complete to Brown, right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 25-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. They'll run on first down with Singletary. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. Stroud out of the gun here. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Noah Brown, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Texans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that's going to be incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. A handoff for ETN. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 146 yards rushing for him now as he's toted it 21 times. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. 
On first and ten, it's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETM. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. A handoff running left is ETN. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. From the 33, here's second down and seven. From the shotgun, Lawrence. He's going to look deep down the field. And this is incomplete. Oh, that looked like a sure six points. But he could not get that to stick. And that is a golden opportunity wasted there. And that's one of the few things that has not gone right for this offense so far. They've had their share of big plays. That was nearly another. But somehow, he just couldn't squeeze it. On third down, Lawrence. That is caught. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter. But the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. And he will find his man on the outside. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the Texans' 13-yard line. Now Lawrence. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And the Jags are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And the passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? On the draw, here's Lawrence. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. He kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself, but the defensive front wouldn't allow him to do so, bringing up second down and a bit farther. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Now Lawrence to throw. Touchdown, Jaguars! Jamal Agnew from four yards out. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point from McManus is good. 
And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Powering his way forward. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. The Houston's offense taking over again. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Stroud. Looking left side, and it's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A game there of 30 big ones. To get back in this ball game, big plays are going to be necessary. And here's one right on cue. Coming up with three scores here in the fourth is not going to be an easy task. But that's good work there to bite off a chunk of yards. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That's complete. It's Collins. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. First down. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Stroud will look to throw once more. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. So the completion good for just three, and it'll be second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. And they're going to speed things up here. Stroud now on second down. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Devin Lloyd, the one to get home and earn that sack. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailing by multiple touchdowns and a late sack, just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. And he will be marked down short of the first as they get to him at the 29. Face man, defense. So give him the yardage on the completion and also tack on 15 more. If you get that hand up there, you've got to let go immediately or just not close the hand at all. He didn't, gave it a tug, and that was easy for the officials to see. First and 10, it's Stroud. Quick slant to Brown. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Stroud. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. Well, yeah, once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Touchdown. 
Stroud to throw it. A yeah, quick throw there is incomplete. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Third and goal, Stroud. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Noah Brown with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Texans are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. The so fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Jaguars are going to cover this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Draw play, ETN. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. ETN once more. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13 yard line. Nice run. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. The Texans gonna signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They'll come to the line here, needing nine yards to pick up the first. First. 
Here's Lawrence. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's four. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the four. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. They have a little bit of time left here, but this one not going to go their way. And this is where, in this situation for me, you just go ahead and run out the clock, shake hands, congratulations, and move on. Because now, <laughs> you're not going to make up for what's happened during the game in this last sequence. We'll see what they do here in this last sequence. Stroud to throw it. This is caught. It's Woods. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And another thing that makes a comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. And nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Now Stroud. Now he'll escape to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Another try, second and ten now. One final shot for C.J. Stroud. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League, but fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared, but executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. So long from Houston.